Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Eleven Winery Virtual Happy Hour Monday Edition. Super exciting. Hey, guys. That was Steven. Just a second. Kelsey, Ted, Steven, Armetha. Good to see you guys. Craig. Kelsey, hello. Matt, hello. How's it going? Go oh, wow. Going real well. I'm super stoked for today, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, Armetha came by today and bought the set. So she's she's ready to experiment with us. So nice. see how that goes. Awesome. Uh, hopefully she has her soda stream. She can preserve those bottles after she's done. Um, oh, we talked about that, actually, when she came by, so. Oh, good, good. Yeah. And uh, what's that? How was your weekend? Oh, really solid. Uh, super productive. Uh, got a workout in, cleaned my room, which was overdue. Um, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. It was, really, it was like just productive with chores, and uh, that felt really good. Nice, so. nice. Um, somebody wants to know how how long it takes to ship wine down to San Diego. Uh, I think San Diego is three days. So if it were shipped, well, so like if it were shipped on Monday, I think it would get there Thursday, kind of a thing. Uh, unless, turn around unless, time. unless you order it faster. Um, so uh, um, uh, I had a good weekend. Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, yes, I was going to ask you that next. Uh, did you? I'm assuming you did some biking, maybe some yes. weightlifting. You know. Uh, well, you know, not so much of the weightlifting, but uh, the biking. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of like weightlifting. Um, we, yeah, we did a long ride on Saturday, and then another long ride on Sunday, uh, which brings us into a rest week. I'm kind of pretty excited about it. I'm pretty sore today, but yeah, we rode the. Uh, Saturday we rode uh, like down to Seabeck, over the hills to Seabeck. Could see the Olympics down there. It's really pretty. And then like around Green Mountain and back up through Gorst and kind of cut through Bremerton, Silverdale, back home. That was like 75 miles. And then uh, yesterday kind of started from Port Gamble and rode a bunch of different trail systems. Like kind of, this is on mountain bikes, like cut through a bunch of different trails up to Hansville wow. and and then back. So that was not as many miles, but it was four hours, and uh, kind of like on and off the road, on and off, on and off. Only got lost a couple times. It was all right. Couple so do you have like you have like big big meals at night to like saturate the amount of calories you burnt in those long rides? Uh, I try to. Well, the the rule of thumb is pre fuel, don't refuel. Oh. But in order to maintain your slender physique. Uh, well, Matt, you were very fit, so people can't, take can't a, my slender physique. So yeah, um, yeah. So I eat, I tend to eat like a big brunch. Yeah. Sarah made on on Sunday. Sarah made these really cool like uh, French. I don't know. They were they were they were pancakes, but like they had she put them in the blender and it was like like a bunch of mushrooms and a bunch of green onions and some bunch of spinach and like and. Uh, it was crazy, but so there were these savory pancakes. They were pretty cool. They were good with bacon. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, healthy, but not as healthy as healthy as the wine we're about to have. <laughs> 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 That's right. Um, uh, so you know, uh, I heard a good. So we were. So you, as you know, we usually do a joke this this time in the show. Amazing and, uh, joke. <laughs> an amazing joke. Well, you know what types of jokes are allowed during quarantine. Drinking jokes? In, inside jokes. Oh, that was actually solid. I like that one. Thank you. <laughs> um, Genuine laugh. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the 11 Winery Virtual Happy Hour, bringing together the 11 Nation for great wine fun. And boy, today we're emphasizing the fun as, <laughs> you know, always the great wine and always the fun, but wow. Okay, it's gonna be special. Uh, so I hope you all are staying home, staying safe and not staying sober. Starting right, right now, starting right now, um, I'm Matt Albee, founder and winemaker of Eleven Winery. With me today on the Instagram is... The Ogre, Stephen Shrek, happiest in here, The Ogre. Uh, if you're on Instagram, you can see Stephen right down there. 
And if you're on the Facebook, you can hear Stephen live on the audio. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't put up your name on the little sign today because you'll see. Um, but it looks like <laughs> maybe, maybe, looks like maybe I have room to do that anyway. Uh, right on. So today, oh my God, today, we're going to see how <laughs> this goes. Today we're doing random blending trials. So we've tasted over the last like four weeks, we've pretty much tasted through all the wines. And so we thought, what are we going to do now? <laughs> we're out of wines to taste. <laughs> Um, and like, it wouldn't really be fair to do library wines cause you guys can't taste those wines. So, um, so we decided we would test out, uh, we would try putting some stuff together. Um, so I've put, so today, so we're going to do whites and then we're going to do reds. So we're going to create a random blend out of whites and a random blend out of reds and, uh, and see how they go. You know, blending sure. is one of, the, one, it's one of the more fun parts of winemaking and, um, uh, one of the cool things about this for me is I've been, you know, I have not uh, often done so much consistent tasting of our own wines day after day. I actually try really hard not to do that because um, uh, if you only ever taste your own wines, you lose perspective. Um, it's very important. I was like, very, very, very important people. Listen to me. Very important. Maintain but still buy a living wine. Maintain perspective. <laughs> you know, keep a piece in all of life, this is probably like the most important thing in life, perspective. Also, right. one of the hardest things to get when you're just doing your thing day after day. Anyway, so same in winemaking as it is in life. Keep perspective. Got to taste other people's wines all the time. Very important. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, probably more important than tasting your own wines. So, so that's what I do. But uh, over the last few weeks, we've really been tasting our own wines day after day and tasting past vintages against current vintages, like a lot. So uh, I've learned some stuff about our wines and how they age. So that's been really cool. So any winemaker who acts like they know everything, any, you know, they're full of it. A lot of winemakers are full of it. Uh, okay. So, you, you're, you're good. You're solid. Uh, <laughs> well, I, try not, I, not, I try not to pretend things that to, to know things that I don't know. Uh, exactly. Okay. So, uh, ba, ba, ba. All right, so today the three, the three, so the three white wines. I threw rosé in here too, just for grins, because um, uh, so the three white wines we're working with are Viognier and Primavera and White Morved. All right. Uh, if you want to learn more about any of those wines, you go back and look at some of the prior episodes, and we we talked about them in detail. But today we're going to be spinning the wheel of random wineness, which I have created right over here. Check this out. The wheel of fortune. Ooh, that's nice. You like that? Very good. Like that's, that's, that's custom. All right. So our first wine, as you can see right there, right there is the Primavera. Oh yeah. Is that? Uh, yeah. Close yeah, LP. LP. Primavera. All right. Primavera. And then our second wine is going to be, if it turns out to be Primavera again, we'll have white to... White Morved, White Morved, White Morved, White Morved. Oh, Rosé. No, it's Viognier. It's Viognier. Oh, so okay, it's, for, it's, it's Viognier. All oh, right, perfect. Viognier. Wah, wah. Sorry, Stephen. All right. All right, so now <laughs> I have to determine how much of each wine we're going to put in, I'm going to roll a die. Check it out. I got this really cool die. All right. It's loaded. It's a loaded no, die. It's totally not. It's totally not. <laughs> I don't know. It might be. <laughs> it's probably loaded, guys. No, I'm just okay. kidding. So, the, so I'm going to roll the wine. I'm going to roll the die for the first wine. And, uh, and then because we're only doing two wines, it'll automatically determine how much of the other wine we're going to put in. Okay. I'm, I'm super stoked. 100% of each. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So that one says, so it's 70% uh, Primavera. All right. So now, this is where we have our graduated cylinder. So I'm going to put my graduated cylinder up to 70, right there, 70. Visual and, check. Oh wait, first, before, before we do that, though, before we do that. This uh, is crazy. This is so crazy right now. I can't even. <laughs> before we do that, let's just, uh, you know, check it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, woo! The Aragon uh, really does preserve the wine. Mm. Just a taste, guys, you know, appropriate tasting size. Hmm. Two ounces. 
you know, nice light, mm, nice light berry character, very fresh and fruity. Oh, that's nice. Woo, that's good. All right, let's get a mm -hmm. little bit, a little bit of Viognier going there. Another two ounces. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what is an actual taste size uh, supposed to be? I mean, you know I know the answer, but this is for our audience. Like in our tasting room? In our tasting room, we do one ounce pours. That's right. That's one ounce, our, exactly. That's our target, one ounce. Yep. So that when, you, when you're, um, so if you're doing our standard tasting, five tastes, you get five one ounce pours. That's the same as a glass of wine. One pinky below. Oh, man. So the Viognier, super aromatic. Oh, yeah. I love the Viognier. Yeah, I love that stuff. You know, Matt, since these bottles have been opened, I got to say they have really popped like the, the rosé I haven't had in a long time. It is really good. Like, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. So, all right. So here we go. Here's the blending part. I'm putting on my, my safety glasses. When you're doing science, you got to have safety glasses, except for Stephen. Stephen does Yes. It. He's got blending. All right. I got my graduated cylinder. We're doing 70% of the rosé. Right, 70%. So that's, so that right there is 70. You can't, okay, now we're going to go up to 30 with the rest. Oh God, this is, this is hardcore right here. This is, uh, Matt, I love this idea. This is, uh, this is good times. Okay, that's undoubtedly not well mixed in there. It does look a little bit lighter already though. All right, here we go, into the glass. Takes a steady hand. So that's a hundred mils. Wow. Hundred. Oh man, that's a, uh, looks like the previous vintage of the white Morvedra. So those, those of you at home who are doing this at home, I would recommend like use like maybe a tablespoon um, so that you end up with 10, 10 total tablespoons, something like that. Uh, pro tip, four tablespoons is a quarter cup. So, um, you know, uh, that might make it quicker in some cases. That would just, or Metha, maybe you can let us know. Yeah, Metha should chime in here. How, how you're doing this. Right. Yeah. So now we have a we have a new, never before tasted blend. So that's the really fun part, unique blend. So we're completely off book here, people. Is uh, is so it's seventy percent of our Primavera and thirty percent of our Viognier. So it's got a hefty chunk of Viognier. Yeah, there's a chunk on here. Woo! Good. What, do you, what, what do you think, Stephen? You know, um, uh, the aromatics from the Viognier are not as prominent. It's a little bit more, I think the rosé might be overpowering it a little bit, but I have a poor sense of smell, so you have to chime in on that one. No, no, I agree. You know, I was kind of expecting that the Viognier is being so potent would really come through on the nose. And uh, it's definitely there, but it's not, it's not overpowering. Yeah, I think, I wonder why, I think maybe the rosé is stronger and I don't know, who knows? Or maybe it's equally strong. I mean, I mean, there's more than twice as much rosé in there. So maybe, you know, twice, you know, maybe even if it's half as strong, there's twice as much. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, maybe evenly balanced between the two. <clears throat> hmm. That's a hard yes. It's a hard yes. Heck yeah. Oh my gosh, really good. Totally, nice and fruity, nicely balanced. As a matter of fact, it has a longer finish to it now. Um, at least I'm, I'm noticing a longer finish on, on this combination. I could drink that all day. Mm-hmm, this is a must. Oh. Right on. See now, people are just gonna have to buy more wine. They just have to buy two bottles instead of one. Well, for summertime, they should just get the Viognier and the Rosé and just mix it up with their friends. They'll have, like, they'll do it in front of their friends and be we like, watch this. Parties. We need to, yeah. so, you just need to get yourself a graduate, I mean, you don't need a graduate cylinder, but it looks really super cool. So I strongly recommend, you know, go to your local science supply or maybe Amazon, whatever, and uh, get yourself a graduate <laughs> cylinder. Okay. There is a so for those of you joining in late, we're doing custom blending. Uh, so this one is 70% Primavera, 30% Viognier. It's a winner. 
That's a hard, that's, that's, that's a definite yes on that. Um, I got some like kind of apple-y tastes actually. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah. Like some, maybe yeah. some like gala apple. Yeah. In there, kind of light. I've never had one of those apples, but you know, I'm sure it tastes good. A gala? You never had a gala? No. Are they local? Do you eat apples? Not really, actually. But I'm a huge apple cider vinegar fan. I'm going to apologize to the people on Instagram because I know this reads backwards for you. Oh, hand upside down. (laughs) Oopsie. Uh, Kelsey, you know too much. More ved. Straw. Tempranillo. So I I wrote these big so you guys could try and hopefully see them on the wheel. All right, I'm going to switch these out for the white for the uh, for the white wines here. I Matt, this is a ton of fun. We got to do an event someday when, where we do this for, uh, for you know, club members and stuff. Okay, I'm switching them out. Maria, I'm up for tips. Any any good apple places? You know, you you know where to you know where to uh, drop the tips. So thank you. Uh, Stephen, I think Gala is probably one of the most common apples in the it's in the supermarket. After, after oh. you know, you're, I think if like, if you like, if you want an apple that's like always there, pretty much the galas are are always there. All right. Oh, okay. So, so you like my you like my you like my wheel construction? Honestly, I, I it's very impressive. I didn't even know that wheel spun. Where's the little arrow on on it? Oh, I, I knew that. Up, I had to rig up. I had to rig up a special thing that holds the bike out from the wall so that that wheel. Can fit. <laughs> you can't right here. I'll show you. Uh, I can show. Well, the people on Facebook can see it better. So, uh, yeah, so I, I set it up so that it's not in the track anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Ingenious. That was like weird breaking of the fourth wall. Uh, yeah. And luckily oh. for us, this wheel, this wheel has 36 spokes, which is evenly divisible by three. So it works out nicely for having three wines in there. It's, they're equally spaced around there. And I use one of Chuck's business cards <laughs> to, uh, you can't, it, you can't really see it, but there's a clamp holding one of Chuck's business cards sticking into the spokes to make the noise. So we're sacrificing Chuck today. I'm sure he, he's uh, happy about that. I bought his business card, so it's cool. That's right. I paid for him. All right. So our first wine is Morved. Yes. Morved. The 17. Right. And this is the, uh, yeah, we're using the Sugarloaf Vineyard. The smoky one because i mean the prodigy there's none of it left so all right here we go spin number two there's one bottle left one bottle that's right oh here comes syrah it's syrah Woo, like touchdown. syrah morved so right. um with these groupings that i created for for the random money trials i tried to put like wines that you know, two wines that I thought kind of fit together, and then a third one that I'm like, eh. So, in this case, we definitely got the two that I thought would go together. Oh, really? Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tempranillo, so Syrah and Morvet are commonly brand, both grown in France, in the south of France, commonly blended. Um, oh, that's right, GSM, of course. GSM. All right, so we're going to pour a little bit into each of a couple glasses here so we can Check them out. Which one should we do first, Matt? The Syrah or the more? Sure, the let's just, let's do, I got the Syrah, so let's do that. Okay. Got a nice inky, dark purple plum color. Oh, smells yummy, delicious. So this is the um, 2017 Elephant Mountain Syrah. Robin, hello, welcome. Join us. Mm. Oh, it's good times. You missed the uh, Rosé Viognier combo. It's good. Oh, the aromatics on this are to die for. It's really, really nice. I cannot Woo. wait. All right. And then we got some of the 17 Morved Sugarloaf Vineyard. This is the smoky one. Oh, oh that's raw is good. All yeah, right. Gosh. 14.9%. That's a good time right there. 14.5. 14.5. Excuse me. They mostly come in. I mean, our target is kind of just over 14. Oh, the smoke. You nailed that it. That bottle's on fire. All right. Mm. 
Just like me. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, that was a bad joke. Okay. Oh, Turn it down, Steven. Oh, Steven. I know. Keep your social distance, man. Trying, trying. All right. Oh, Mike's tuning in. Mike Polyakov. There we go. Hey, Michael. <laughs> All the way from... Never mind. So, yeah. so uh, I got a little bit of 17 more veg to go up here. Here we go. Ooh, I can smell the smoke. It's nice. It smells smoky. Mm. Got nice, soft, black fruit. Love it. Oh, man. Okay. Got, I'm rolling the dive. The dive. I don't know. The dive plant. Blah, percentages. Pleasure. Oh, sorry. All right. All right. Now, keep if you want to, so uh, those of you keeping score at home are probably wondering, how did he get a seven on that six-sided die? Um, the way that I figured this out was I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do ones. I didn't want to do 10%. I wanted to have at least 20%, you know, just so that we have at least a significant contribution from each of the wines. And so I'm just adding one and then multiplying by 10. So wow. we've, got, we've effectively we've got two through seven. Um, I did a bunch of math to make sure that it was going to work out good. Trust Matt me. was a physics major, guys, uh, so me. he knows his math. I got the math. That's right. And the glasses, full effect, full effect. Okay. Oh, it's it's, a, it's another seven. <clears throat> All right, seventy percent. So we're going seventy percent Syrah, because that was our first one was the Syrah. Oh gosh. Okay, here we go. This is uh this is hardcore over here. If you want, you can pour the thirty first. It doesn't matter. But I'm gonna pour the seven first because I've already got my I've already got my handy dandy indicator set at the seven. Yeah. No, yeah, this is cool. I want I want one of these. Uh... graduated cylinder is what you're trying to say. All right, here we go. If it disappears from the tasting room, it wasn't me. <laughs> All right, it's rough. I went. I put a little too much in. I was very serious in chemistry in college, Matt. I got uh, B plus uh, at UW. B plus. A B plus. B you plus. Call, call that serious? Uh, for me, it's pretty good, you know. <laughs> compared to the yeah, rest I'm, of your compared to the rest of your educational achievements. I'm usually a C average. What? I find that hard to believe. <laughs> you just weren't applying yourself. That's you true. Just, you were focusing on the extracurriculars. I know you. <laughs> there is, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Here we go. We're up. To, we're we're up to one hundred percent. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no! All right. Oh no! I mean, shoot. Random blending trials. This is so much fun. We should. Uh, this is seriously. This is awesome. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you thought of this. These are the only problems. Uh, so this is, uh, it looks like a lot. <clears throat> well, it's a hundred percent or a hundred mils. It's a hundred mils. I mean, a hundred mils, you could get, you could get seven and a half of those glasses out of a bottle, right? I guess so. That's the story. So what's 750 divided by five? I don't know. I don't have a calculator. Oh, I don't know. I'm a math guy. I don't do 125-ish. 125 times six is... I don't know. Anyway, uh, so, all right, so here we have now 70% Syrah and 30% Morved. 150. It's really dark. It's really dark. Like, that's the first thing I noticed right off the bat. It's really dark. And, I mean, the Syrah is dark, off, you know, already, but Morvedra, the 17 is pretty dark, too, compared to the Prodigy. Mm. Oh, I, I can't really, I can't really smell the smoke anymore. At, down at thirty percent, I'm not picking it up. Yeah, maybe the dark, few, uh, dark fruit notes from the yeah. straw kind of muting it a little bit on the smoky. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the taste is like. Rich is correct. Graduated beakers. That's more my style. Uh, you mean like an Erlenmeyer, a graduated beaker? Yeah, beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask. X Files, yes. There was an episode called Erlen Meyer Flask. It was really cool. Really? Yeah. I'm a huge sci fi nerd, so, you know, it's all good. Oh, man, I loved X Files. Oh, that was a good time. 
I want to believe, Matt. I want to believe. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, no smoke. Okay, yeah, nice fruit on it. Yeah, like dark, like nice dark fruit notes in the nose. Mmm, oh. mmm. Oh my gosh. Heck yeah. We just nailed it. To, like, like the chance of oh. the, I mean, wow. Oh, you know what? I can still, on the finish, on the finish, I still get a yep. little bit of smoke. I just got it. Yeah. That's kind of oh. typical of, of uh, smoke affected wines is if you, if you don't get it up front, if it's in there, you know, you'll taste it on the finish after the, after you swallow the wine and most of it's kind of cleared out. It kind of, it kind of lingers a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of like we're in like Breaking Bad and we're doing things that like aren't allowed and it's just ending up like really well, you know. Oh, this is delish. Yeah. And it actually has a drier mouthfeel um, than it typically would by themselves. At least I'm getting a super dry mouthfeel on this. Or finish, dry, dry finish, I should say, technically. That could be hmm, interesting. Interesting. You know, when, oh you my take, God. when you take a bunch of sips in like in succession, like we, we had a sip of the Syrah and then a sip of the Morved and then a sip of the blend. Um, the tannins actually build up in your mouth. Um, so it could be that too. Uh, mm. uh, I learned that from, uh, I think I learned that from Ann Noble, who, who the, de the developer of the flavor wheel that's commonly used in uh, writing wine descriptions um, that the, tannins are sticky enough that they'll I mean the reason that they make your tongue feel like it's been dried off is because they stick they stick to your tongue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it takes like it takes like five minutes for for your mouth to clear all that stuff off if you don't have food or something else to drink or something um so if you if you have you know a sip of wine and then another sip of wine that second sip will seem drier because the tannins from the first sip haven't cleared out yet it's one of those things we got to be really careful about when we're doing tasting trials here uh you know at the winery these things i think from now on when we do tasting trials we're just going to do it live like this and this is it. awesome because it's one of the most fun things that we do and uh, uh but if, when we're doing like whew, some th some things that we do are super boring <laughs> <laughs> seriously i mean i mean some some tasting stuff because we'll line up we'll have like five different things that are slightly different and we'll spend a lot of time in between each one like tasting and sipping and tasting and uh, and it's a very slow we try to be very careful um but man yeah this is honestly like this is this is solid i mean we don't have a, a gsm but we do have the ratio rosso that's the closest thing to this although the 17 morvet is not in there so actually neither of these are in there right not the current well it is the 18 rosso and this is the 18 syrah emd oh that's right. Okay, I stand well, correct. Sometimes, you know, if we have if we have one Syrah, the Syrahs are not always all the same. Exactly. Like if we have one, if we're if we're deliberately making Syrah to go into the the Rosso, we'll try and get it off the skins a little bit quicker. So if we um, just to have a little bit less tannin, because we know we're going to release that one sooner, so we'll try and yeah. get it off a little bit faster. So we try to make those wines a little bit lighter in style before they go into that blend. Um, gotcha. But yeah. Well, I would say that these combinations turned out super well. I don't know if you have anything else for this, but wow. <laughs> I don't. Um, <laughs> That's good. I think, uh, and I'm not, I'm not gonna finish these glasses either because that would be too much for me right now. Um, awesome. That was really fun. Um, so what was the first, uh, when was the first time you did this uh, as it relates to 11? Like when was the first time you, you did like this type of trial? Random blending trials? Yeah, yeah. I've never done this before. This oh. is totally new. What? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I, all, generally speaking, our, our, taste, our blending trials are fairly directed. You know, we know we, 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 know what wines we have available you know for blending and or what we want to achieve and um what we've got in barrels and so those those tastings tend to be pretty focused like we've got we've got a b and c 
you know, we've got about this much, so it's got to be fairly close to this sort of a percentages. Um, you know, my hope is that uh, in maybe in a couple of weeks, we will we'll, uh, get samples of all the red wines. So we'll, we're actually going to, we're going to be doing some, some red wine blending prior to bottling coming up in June. Um, okay. so, and so that needs to happen. And that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. And so when we get those samples pulled, um, we'll bring them in and we'll sub them in here. So these are the six wines that we're going to be doing this with all week long. And so uh, I expect that we're going to get, we're, you know, we're going to get different combinations all week. So we use these same six bottles. Um, here at the winery, we're going we're gonna to preserve these with Argon, you know, from today to tomorrow to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, if you at home want to, if you want to play along, no problem. Just you can order these six bottles. We've got them uh, uh, packaged as a set on our website. We'll get them out to you. Um, same thing for next week and the week after. We've got it all set up for the next four weeks because apparently we're still going to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm enjoying currently. <laughs> <laughs> by which I mean, by which I mean, we're not going. The tasting room is not going to be open for tasting, so we're going to keep doing happy hour, and uh, uh, yeah, this will be super fun. You know, Matt, I really do miss everybody. Uh, you know, we get to see them when they come in to get the kit and the bottles and stuff. But all I want to do is pour wine for everybody. You know. I know, right? It's uh, It'll be it'll be fun when we can get people back in. I'm sure it's not going to be the same as it was before for for a while. Um, yeah, but we'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll we'll have. Uh, I mean, we know who the people are who've been tuning in, and uh, you know. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, as always, it's been super fun uh, tasting with you guys. Uh, could we post the percentages and the vintages? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, I can tell you what it is too, but it's, uh, so we were doing the 70, we had our first one was 70% of the Primavera and 30% of Viognier. And the second one was 30, 70% Syrah and 30% Morved. It was the, the new Syrah, the 18 Syrah EMV that we just went out in the club shipment and is available. Um, and we've got Delicious. the 17 Morved SLV and it was the, uh, the 18, the 2018 Viognier. Yeah, um, but um, we'll figure out a way. You know, we'll we'll do a post. We'll do a post somewhere on on these uh, blends and and the fact that they worked out awesome. And, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people a lot of people feel like once it goes into the bottle, that's like the end. And wow, you shouldn't mess with it. But you know what? Go crazy. Why not? There's a new world out there. Yeah. Um. All right. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. If you need some wine, uh, you know where to find us. So many of you have been finding our coming down to our tasting room and buying bottles from our tasting room. Super appreciate that. That is helping us out greatly and uh, helping us keep going until we are able to serve you again. And, or you can order online and we'll ship it out to you. And remember, hang in there, people. We got this. We got this. We're getting closer every day to when we can be open again. And uh, <laughs> remember... <laughs> Doesn't matter if your glasses are half full or half empty, there's room for more wine. Woo! We'll see you tomorrow, Steven. Cheers. Thanks, Matt. Catch you all later.